The Lord has been impressing upon my heart. It's a message entitled, Friend of Sinners. A Friend of Sinners. Uh, I, I was, uh, I'll just kind of give you the background of this story. I uh, was sitting in my office. And uh, I've been working on, on staff here full-time for three years, been uh, on part-time staff for 10 years, and so for a good portion of my life, I worked in the, I worked in the secular field, and so I worked in the world. I worked uh, with some rough gentlemen, and uh, I remember being excited at times to just go into the job to share the message of Jesus Christ, Amen. But I, I think if we're not careful, sometimes we can get so busy doing church work that we forget to do God's work. And so this message began to stem out of that Jesus was never accused of being friend of Christians. But he was accused of being friend to sinners. And uh, if I need to change mics, y'all let me know, guys. I know I'm getting a little bit of ringing. But the truth is this. I want in my own personal life not, that I, not to be the person that, can, that somebody will say, you know what, that's a good guy, but I don't know if he's got any friends that are sinners. Because I began to inventory my life, and I began to think, when was the last time that I shared the message of Jesus Christ with someone that was lost and undone? other than here in this house of God. And so God began to challenge me, and he began to convict me, and, 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 truth, and truthfully, he began to give me a mission again. Not to become, you know, it's easy to isolate ourselves with Christian people that do Christian things, and you know what? The worst thing that we do is that sometimes we might miss church on Sunday. And I know we all have sin in our life, but you get what I'm saying, that we are not going into the place that God has called us to be. And, and in this word today, I want to share with you, but, but truthfully, let me, I want to get there in just a moment, but have you ever seen someone on a mission? Like they were on a mission to get something done. Anybody? Listen, now, I, I, I'm telling you, I'm, you if you want to get out of here before, like, before you can see the late night show, you might want to get vocally engaged because... I can talk about nothing for a long time, I promise. Now, here we go, here we go. All right, y'all buying in to what I'm selling, all right. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so one of the main things that I want you to understand is that sometimes when people get on a mission, they become so focused on what they're supposed to do, and they don't, and, and in some ways, they, they don't look to the side, and, and that's the kind of mission I want to be on. I don't want to get caught by the things that don't matter. So I went to the doctor this week. You know what they always tell me? It's like I don't know this. You're fat. Okay, I got mirrors. I understand that, doc. So they told me that my sugar was too high. I told them I was really sweet. <laughs> they said your sugar's too high, Mr. Cribs, and... Uh, uh, your blood pressure is too high, and I said, you should, be with the, you should meet the folks I work with. You would understand it all. And uh, they began to tell me that I needed to change some things, and, and so I began to get on this keto diet. Any keto people in here? All right, there we go, keto people in here. So, so listen, if you don't know about this diet, basically if it tastes good, you got to spit it out. That's the easiest way to... That's the easiest way to understand it. And so uh, I went, and, and listen, you want to know how I knew my life changed? One day after getting this news and understanding I needed to make some life changes, I went to this place that many of you probably frequent as well, not JP's, Sonny's. <laughs> Sonny's. And so I went to Sonny's there, and I sat down, and... Uh, my entire life, I've drank sweet tea from Sonny's. It is the most amazing sweet tea in all of the world. And I sat down that day, and that moment I had to make a decision if I was really going to stay on my mission or if I was going to do the things that I used to do. And so my senior pastor told me this. 
that lemons will cover a multitude of nasty water. So I asked the lady, could you bring me a glass of water with a bunch of lemons? And I, in that moment, knew my life was forever changed because I was able to say no to sunny sweet tea because I had a mission. Before, I just wanted to lose weight so I could look good. And I think I look good, especially if I turn to the side. All uh, right, we'll stop all that. But, uh, but the truth is that in my life, I didn't have a, the why behind my mission wasn't important enough. But when a doctor tells you that you're 30 years old and you got high blood pressure and you know what, you're on course to have real bad di diabetes, you know what, something inside of me began to change and the mission began to get a why. I understood why I needed to eat healthy. I understood why I needed to exercise. Because the truth is, if I continue to go down this path, it was going to be a situation I couldn't turn around and change. And so tonight, may, maybe some of you are, have seen it, or maybe you're a part of it. Pastor Adam and I, before service tonight, was talking about Dave Ramsey and, and his debt snowball. If you ride by my house and my children are outside for sale, just understand, hashtag Dave Ramsey. He said sell it if you got to pay down debt. So uh, we're going to get a high premium, though, for him, I promise you. So, uh, But, uh, you know... Listen, some people get so focused, and if there's a good why behind the mission, it isn't that hard. And tonight, I want to talk to you about the why we should be friend of sinners. You see, Jesus begins to outline, and this is what I know, that if the why is important enough, the what does not matter. If the why is important enough, the, why, the what does not matter. And so today, I want to just encourage you, what is... What's fueling you? Have, you? have you taken a step back and stopped sharing the message of love with people that you know? Have you stopped sharing the message of hope with people that need it? Because the truth is, I think sometimes we fail to do the mission because we fail to understand the importance of the why. Jesus begins to unpack in this scripture something I think is very profound. And, and it comes, the, what I want to start out is what Jesus begins to tell us in John chapter 13. He says, I give you a new command. Love one another just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. Listen, we cannot pick and choose who we want to love. Love does not have a color. Love does not have a shape. Love does not have a size. Love does not have a success level. Love does not have a morality level. Love is in this part. Jesus created you, and I'm going to love you. And so the truth is this, and I want you to understand that, that if, you don't get, if you don't get any part of this message, understand that love never gives up. So keep inviting. Love always looks for the best. Have you ever met people that's just hard to find the best? All right, don't look at nobody next to you. Love does not fly off the handle. Uh-oh, I, I didn't even want to put that one in the notes. Because I got a tendency times to fly off the handle. Love trusts God always. Love cares more for others. So how does how does this play into this? Because if you don't get the if you don't get the foundational belief that God has called us to love people, you'll never get the part of this message that I'm going to preach to you tonight. And it comes out of Matthew 28, 18 through 20, and, and, and it'll be on the screen for you. It says, Jesus undeterred went right ahead and gave his charge. God authorized and commanded me to commission you. Go out and train everyone you meet, far and near, in this way of life, marking them by baptizing in them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then instruct them in the practice of all I have commanded you, and I will be with you as you do this day after day, right up to the end of the age. You know what Jesus Christ is saying in this scripture? When you are a friend of sinners, when you take the message of Jesus Christ and you go out to those people, uh, he's saying, I am right there beside you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to make a way where there seems to be no way. I know, I, and I can't get on my preaching 
because I got some on the back end I want to give to you. But, but the truth is this, that God has given us the why. He's given us the what? Go into all the world. Share the message of love and Jesus. Share that message of hope because people, you want to know the why? Because people, souls, depend upon us taking that mission and saying, you know what, I care enough about you to tell you about Jesus Christ. How many times have we felt the, the Holy Spirit or God speak to us just to share just something that's going on in your life with somebody, but you just, nah, not today. It could, I, I had the opportunity uh, in H-Track the other day, uh, we, I, I always talk about the importance here at the harbor uh, one of the ways that we're going to reach the people that we, that we want to reach is when people bring people into the house of God. And this, this young lady, was or I, she was probably mid-50s. I'm about 30, so that's starting to look young. And, uh, but she was in the back there, and she told me, she, she raised her hand, and she said, Pastor Josh, she said, can I share with you something? I said, yes, ma'am, go ahead. And uh, you always get nervous when, when, when new people want to share with you. So uh, I was sitting there kind of nervous, but she said, you know, for 30 years of my life, I was an atheist. She said, I didn't believe. She said, but I remember saying to, I didn't even know I was praying to God. I just said, if there's, a, if there's somebody in heaven or there's somebody up there, that if you'll, if you'll have somebody invite me to church, I'll go. And she said for three years, she had people that called themselves Christians that, ne that walked past her day after day until finally someone with enough courage walked up to her and said, you know what, hey, I want to know if you'll go to church with me this Sunday. And you know what, if you do, I'll take you out to lunch. And from that day, God began a story in her life that she was able to stand in there and say, for 21 years, I have declared Jesus Christ as my Savior because somebody <laughs> made that opportunity and they went for it. So Jesus made our why very clear. It's that other souls are depending on what we're supposed to do, and that is to share the love of Jesus Christ. If that doesn't fuel you, I don't understand what will. Listen, people every second, it says every two seconds, people in this world die. That means they are standing before the judgment seat. That means that they are going to have to give an account for their entire life. And how awesome would it be for you to be a part of somebody's story? How awesome would it be for you to walk down glory one day, walk down the streets of glory one day, and somebody come up and they tap you on the shoulder, and they say, Sister Long, I know you might not know me, but you remember that one time in the grocery store? You know you just told me that, that it was going to be all right, and things began to turn around in my life. Because of you, I'm here today. And so my question to you is, is the why big enough? Is the why big enough for you to do the what? And today, the what is to share the message of Jesus Christ. Tonight, we're going to look at the mission of Jesus and, the, and, and what he done and see how he affected and changed the culture around him. So in John chapter 2, verse 6, it says, Whoever says he abides in me ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. So Jesus is saying, if you love me, if you're a Christian, you want to be a part of me, then you need to do what I do. I know, I know, I, I'm, I'm, you're, you're, I'm a preacher. So, so words are what I do, but actions are what I should be. I should be the words. I shouldn't just stand up here in this pulpit and say something and not be the person that's in, at the grocery store or in, in building relationships with people outside of here to share that because I need to do what Christ's done. So, so if you're a note taker, I'm going to kind of go through these quickly tonight. But it says this, that, that, that the truth is I believe if we're going to affect the world around us and if we're going to be a friend of sinners, I believe that we will have to look at what Jesus Christ done. And the first thing that Jesus Christ done was he pursued the lost. He pursued the lost. You see, and he did it at all cost. I know you're looking and you're saying, what do you mean? Do you understand what Jesus Christ did for you and I? That we were separated because of this thing called sin? Jesus Christ didn't have to come, but he said, you know what, I'll go, and I'll be the sacrifice, because nobody else can do it, but I can, and he left heaven to come to earth, 
and he died for you and I while we were so unworthy, so unclean. Listen, my friends, he come pursuing us. He could have stayed right where he was at. But he loved us enough. You see, we as the church, we, we can't just come into church on Sunday and Wednesday and, and, and be in these, these four walls. These four walls sometimes, they're, they're the most dangerous things in our society. Because we begin to look around, and then you know what happens on Sunday morning? You come in on Sunday morning, and you see a packed house. And you know what happens? You begin to say, somebody else is doing a really good job. Somebody else is inviting somebody. We've got a full house. Listen, Mother's Day, we had 700 people here. Highest attended Sunday outside of Easter. Can I tell you, though? In Camden County, there's 60,000 people. We are not making, we're not making a big dip, my friends. Don't, don't bump our head because this room is filled up. I want heaven to be filled up. I want us to get excited about pursuing the lost again. Amen? I want us to get excited that when we get up in the morning, it's not, God, can you help me make it through the day? It's, God, can you help me lead somebody else to Jesus? You see, my friends, I want you to understand there's two options here today. You can come and you can sit on these pews, and, and as, as Pastor has coined the phrase, you can be fat, dumb, and happy. And listen, I've been there. I know, y'all said, we know we got the fat part down. I graduated from Camden, so we probably got the dumb part down. And if you take me to lunchbox, we'll have the happy part down. Not anymore, not anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm recovering from all that. I can't go down there. Hey, listen, I ain't going to lie, though. I'm a, I'm a, y'all, y'all can celebrate with me on this. 21 days, no bread, no sweet tea, no Mountain Dew. Yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> you mean, but you can come in church, and you can sit here, and you can sit on, on the pew, and you know what? You can, you can soak up all the teaching, and you can be one of the greatest resources of the information that you have, and you can, you, can, you, you, you can know the Bible from front to back, or you can say this, you know what, there may not be a lot that I know, but I know this, that Jesus Christ saved me, and he wants to do the same thing for you, amen? So we've got two options here. We can sit down, or we can go after the lost. We, I just pray tonight that something inside of you, when you leave here, gives you that courage, that confidence, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share the message with somebody because their life depends on it. I'm going to share the message with somebody because it matters. Ask yourself this question. When's the last time you shared what Jesus Christ has done in your heart? Or when's the last time you even shared him with someone else? I believe today we would all be broken hearted by, under, by, by if we really honestly answered that question. Which one will you be? Will you be a thermostat or a thermometer? You see, you're going to go to your job tomorrow. You're going to go to your hobby. You're going to go out into the world. And you got, you got two options. You can either be a thermometer or a thermostat. A thermometer will tell you what the temperature is. A thermostat sets it. A thermostat sets it. And my f- question to you, are you going to let the world be, be the one telling you what the temperature is out there? Or are you going to walk into that job and you're going to say, you know what? I know that there's parameters that I can't get up here on this table and preach. But you know what I can do? I can ask you to go to lunch with me. And I can begin to tell you my story. And I can begin to share with you the message and hope of Jesus Christ. So my, friend, my, my question to you is, will you pursue them like Jesus did? The second thing that Jesus did, he invited them. He invited them. You see, Jesus, some of the most famous words that Jesus has in the Bible is, come follow me. Come follow me. Like, like just think about it. Jesus, when he was going to get his disciples, come follow me. He went to them, and the thing I love about the disciples is he didn't just go and pick out a certain group. What what he done was he picked out different people from different places, different backgrounds, different jobs, because he understood. 
I need the kingdom. I'm going to leave this thing on with them, and I need them to be able to reach out to every, uh, some, some people over here and some people over there. So you know what? That's what I love about this harbor is because we become multicultural. And you know what? There's going to be some people over here I can't reach, and there's going to be some people over here I can't reach. But that's why God brought us all together, because we've got influence in our, with the people that's around us. It's just a question, will we speak up? Will we speak up and invite? You see, Jesus not only welcomed his disciples, but I can think of a man, a little, a little fellow named Zacchaeus that was up in a tree, and he said, I'm coming to your house today. He didn't even give him the option. Maybe, maybe that's the way we should start doing evangelism. We just show up at the door with a Bible. Guess what we're going to do today? We're going to sit down right here. We're gonna have, I'm just joking. It probably wouldn't work out for you. Wouldn't work out for you. But the, I, I think of this one, and this one's really one that kind of broke my heart. Jesus was with a rich young ruler, is what the Bible says. And he's, the rich young ruler come to him and he said, I've done everything, but how can I get into the kingdom of God? And he said, I'll sell all your possessions and follow me. And it's like that thing of saying, you almost had me, Jesus. I was right there. But you don't know what all the stuff I got. I like, I got the new ride. I got, I got, I got it all. I got the, I got the curved flat screen. Have y'all ever thought about that? Curved flat screen is weird, but like $10,000 at Best Buy. I seen one at Pastor Adam's house. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking, guys. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but, but listen, this rich young ruler is standing there and he's got everything and Jesus says, come follow me and that, and that young man says, you know what, I, I can't do it and, and I began to think I began to think, what did he miss out on? If he would have just said yes, he could have seen all the miracles. He could have seen all the great things. But Brother Troy, this is the part that got me in the passage, that Jesus Christ asked him anyways. He, was, he wasn't sitting there saying, you know what? And this is what we're guilty of. We walk around with these little Jesus, little Jesus meters, and we're like, Jesus cannot save him. Like, mm -mm, I ain't even going to waste my time. Like, like, I'm wasting oxygen if I ask him. Like, do you know how bad he is? Like, I remember this one guy told me, he said, I can't come to your church. I said, why not? He said, the roof will cave in. I said, we got hard hats. <laughs> we're going to take the excuses away. But listen, we walk around and we're like, man, that, that's not what, Jesus can't even do anything with him. And I believe this, that Jesus Christ was with this young man and he knew all the money, he knew all the possessions, but you know what? He still invited him anyways. And I just want to encourage some of you, there may be people that you're looking at and you're like, you know what? I'm not, I know they're not going to give up sleeping around on their wife. I know they're not going to give up partying every week. I know that they're not going to, I know they're not going to give up their boats and all these other things to come and be in church on Sunday. Listen, don't make that don't 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 make that answer for them ask them encourage them because it could be the most important thing that they ever hear in their life because Jesus invited them you see Jesus understood this that one invitation could change their entire life and the same thing can happen with you and I the third thing that I believe Jesus Christ lived out for us is this, that, that, or that Jesus did was he lived it out. He lived out Christianity. How many of us, and please don't raise your hand, are so guilty of coming to church and hearing these messages that, that challenge our heart but never change our life? How many times do we come to church and we're like, God, I want to hear something great. I need something great. And we hear it, but only to find out that we leave here and we never act it out. So Jesus, though, he understood, I've got to live out what I'm preaching. I can't sit here and say I love people and then turn my back on them. I can't sit here and say I love people and never engage with them. Think about the woman at the well. Jesus Christ went out of his way. 
Because he understood there was somebody there that needed him. And he began to, he was not only living out what he was preaching, but he was going and he was, he was sharing with them the importance of the message of hope. You see, if we really love Jesus, we will go after those people and we will live the life that he's called us to live. Do you understand why Jesus Christ lived out what he lived out? Do you understand why he came and he got 12 disciples? Because he was pointing us to the direction to say, you need to live in community. You know why life groups are important? And if you haven't signed up, you need to do so tonight. You need to, listen, I understand, I know you're saying, my, you, you, don't know my, you don't know my summer schedule, Pastor Josh. I got to be here, there, and everywhere. Listen to me. I just want you to understand this. If you can't make it but three weeks, it is three weeks in community that you did not have. But I know this, when you begin to live your life in community, because Jesus Christ showed us, and, and the, the church is, uh, Brother Troy, uh, Adam, can y'all help come up here on the stage real quick and help me? Uh, I'm just going to show them a real quick illustration. They didn't know this was happening, so, uh, but listen, guys, I think if we're not careful, we begin to see Jesus Christ living out his life, and sometimes we don't. If y'all just come right here, uh, and we're going to kind of just make a circle. So many times, this is the way the church begins to live out community. We, we got our little thing going on, and we speak all the same language, and we know what everything's going on here at the church and how great it is, but what are they seeing? They're seeing our backside. They can't get in. They can't get into what we're doing in here, and so people get turned off by church, and they're saying, you know why? Because I get tired of seeing people's backside, and, and church is just all about them. But listen, let's just turn around, and, and, and you, uh, you turn that back that way. I'm going to turn this way. Brother Troy, if you'll turn that face that way. There we go. All right, Adam, can I grab your arm over here? All right, you know what? But this is the way Jesus Christ began to live community. And you know what it is? We still got each other's back. You know what? We got each other, but it's, it's when we begin to live out and say, you know what? Hey, come on in. Come on in. You know what? We, we, we are a family here. I appreciate you guys. Thank y'all. And you know what? The enemy will use whatever he can. He'll begin to tell you, you know what? He'll divide you by political parties. He'll say they're Democrats and they're Republicans and, and they're liberals and all this. And he'll begin to do all those things because he understands this. If I can isolate them from community, if I can make the outside world look like they're just a bunch of butts up there, then they can't get in. Then in my friends, then, then the enemy begins to win. And so Jesus Christ began to show us community. I got 12 disciples, and you know what? We're going to stand together. You know what? When, the, when everything's bad, we're still going to stand together, but we're going to be welcoming people in. We're going to be bringing them in. You see, it's in the worst situations of life that people need community most. I know this. Most people come to church when their marriage is on the rocks, when they're in a financial struggle, or when they have answers, or they have questions that they have no answers to. And you know what? We don't need a bunch of spiritual people walking around here acting like we got it together. We need people that says, you know what? I'm not perfect, but I'm living for Jesus. I'm not perfect, but I've been right where you're at. I'm not perfect, but I want you to know, you got a shoulder to cry on. You, you know what? I don't have all the answers for what you're going through, but I believe this. Jesus Christ called us to live in community together. But the last and final thing that I want to share with you tonight before we get you out of here is this. That Jesus launched them out. Our last line of our, of our vision is, Reach, educate, and deploy. Listen, my friends. Jesus Christ spent 30 years preparing himself and for three years began to prepare the people that would carry on when he was gone. And my question to you today is, are you willing to carry on what he started so long ago? Are you willing to share love? Are you willing to share grace? Are you willing to share mercy? Because I want you to understand this. That, that, that Jesus begins to tell us, 
in Luke chapter 12, 8 and 9, that I tell you, whoever publicly acknowledges me before others, the Son of Man will also acknowledge before the angels of God. But whoever disowns me before others will be disowned before the angels of God. Jesus Christ has given us a mandate. He's given us a mission. He's given us the why. He lived it out. He, he pursued others. He invited them. He lived his life out in a way that, that, that people wanted to be like him. But then, he didn't give us all that information to sit in these walls and do nothing. So my encouragement to you, my, if it's a next step for you, is to, this week to identify one person and say, I am going to share the message of Jesus Christ. Now, I don't know what that looks like for you. I don't, I'm not saying that you got to get up. And, and you, uh, one time I remember in high school, this young girl was acting crazy, and I just told her, I said, listen, if you don't get things right, you're going to die and you're going to go to hell. That wasn't the right approach. She looked at me like uh, I could have went straight there. The approach was wrong. Shouldn't have done it that way. But people, we need, to, we need to spend some time. Can I tell you the part I love about the story of Zacchaeus? Jesus knew how bad Zacchaeus was. He worked for the IRS. Anybody in here work for the IRS? My name's Adam Saints. He knew how bad he was. And when Jesus came into town, little Zacchaeus had climbed that tree. And Jesus looked up and he said, Zacchaeus, today I'm going to go to your house. Because this is the part that we got to understand. Before we rush into the world, taking the message of Jesus Christ and, and blazing through there and saying, you need to change your life, we first got to build a relationship. People need to know you care. They don't need you to stand up and tell them how dirty they are and, and how horrible they are and how bad they are. They already know that. What they need is somebody to say, hey, I love you and I care for you. And you know what? I know it ain't going to probably happen overnight, but I'm going to be here. I'm going to walk this step with you. As I close tonight, my I want to just share this last story with you. I'd worked at this job, and I was 16 years old. No, I might have been 17. I think I was 17. And uh, I was in this job, and it was a mechanic's position, and I uh, just worked with some rough guys. And I remember one of the guys that we kind of became friends, and we began to talk, and he's like, you know, was raised Catholic all my life, and just kind of, I'm over that part of my life. And um, I got, got to know him found out just a few years before he had he had shot a man they had both were drunk he shot a man and uh the guy didn't die but he got off on self-defense and i'm just giving you this whole backstory to understand where this guy came from uh and, and just life was kind of in a turmoil for him and i remembered asking him i said hey yo uh, would you come to church with me and he said bleep 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 no well, i was like okay Hashtag fail. So I waited like three months. I thought that was a good time to have the conversation again. I said, hey, man, you gonna, would you mind going to church with me? Bleep, 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 bleep. I was like, oh, boy, I only got half the bleeps this time. We going somewhere. And then I remember we had an event at the church, and I was like, you know what? This dude likes making fires. Like, he, he, he's just such a pyro. And that was a job that I needed done for this event. And so I was like, hey, would you come and help me build a fire? He was like, you know how to build a fire? I was like, I know, but I got a million things going on. He was like, do you really need me? I was like, yeah. I mean, I knew we could have got somebody else, but I wanted him there. And so he came that day, and, man, he had this fire so hot, it was like you couldn't stand from, like, me to the sound booth from it. Was, it was blistering. But you know what? The guys from our church began to get out there, and you know what? He began to start a conversation with this guy, and then this guy come over, and he had another conversation with him. And before I knew it, I began to see a smile on his face, and we came back to work the next week, and he was like, you know, your church ain't that bad. I was like, man, I've been telling you this. 
And you know what? And a few weeks later, he, he said, you know what? I think I'm going to come. I said, man, that would be awesome. Long story short, and I'm going to roll this thing up. He, he, uh, he got into church, and about six months went by. I never seen him come down to the altar. I never seen him raise his hands to, to pray the prayer of salvation. And then one night, under, a, under the street light un, in the parking lot, he walked up to me with tears streaming down his face. And he said, Pastor, he said, well, he didn't call me Pastor. He said, Josh, can I, can I talk with you? And I said, yeah, man. He said, I want to thank you for inviting me and giving me a chance. He said, I believe that I want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life again. Would you pray with me? And I got to pray the prayer of salvation right there. And you know what the beauty of this thing is? He don't, he don't come to this church now. You know what? He didn't have a bad problem. He just said, I, I'm not sure I can go to that big church y'all got going on out there. But you know what? He's at another church serving every Sunday, leading programs over there. And glory be to God because kingdom <laughs> received a soul. And that's not to, I'm not lifting me up. I'm just telling you if you will share that message of hope after you build that relationship, I believe it will change their life. So today, my friends, I ask you, be friends of sinners. We love you guys. We encourage you to be a part of a life group. Do community together like Jesus showed us. We hope to see you this coming Sunday uh, as Dr. Johan Brewer will be here speaking. So you'll want to be a part of that. Uh, it's going to be an awesome word. We love you guys. We appreciate y'all. Y'all have a wonderful night.